see you, Bill. The Battle Bruins and the Phoenix Phantom. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Cole, along with Rob Hintz. We welcome you to Phoebus High School for tonight's contest between the Bethel Bruins and the Phoebus Phantoms. The Lady Bruins come into this game 2-10 and 10 in the district, 4-11 and 11 overall. And the Phoebus girls team, 6-5 and five in the district, 8-6 and six overall record. Uh, Bob, we had hoped to have a chance to talk with the uh, coaches beforehand, so I'm going to let you go ahead and say what they might have said. Well, basically, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they would have said. Yeah, the... Uh, Basically, what happened is they played four games here tonight, and by playing four games, everything is, is much tighter, and I'm just blowing my ears right off my head here, <laughs> trying to get this thing. But this, this will, we're going to have the national anthems. So let's catch that, and I'll try to bring everybody up to date. We invite you now to join us for the playing of the national anthem. You might want to turn that down. Well, Tim, what you're going to find tonight is both of these teams like to play up-tempo basketball, and they're, they're going to do a lot of pressing, a lot of man-to-man, -man, a lot of switching, and both of these teams, of course, trying to, to improve their record so that they can get higher seeds in the tournament. We only have about, what, about five, six Good games left in the regular the tournament the, the season before the tournament starts. So uh, we'll get a chance. We're going to interview or going to introduce the uh, starters. All right, and we will be introducing the uh, Lady Bruins first. Those are the Phantoms in your picture. But, in fact, the Bruins will be uh, represented by, first of all, Veronica Johnson, who uh, talked to uh, Mr. Johnson before the game. Yeah, that's very odd. His daughter plays on the Bethel team, and his boy plays on the Phoebus team. <laughs> Phoebus boys team, girls, uh, I'm not sure why, but we I'm not either. <laughs> I didn't ask him. <laughs> Brooke Williams is the other guard, the... Forward will be Ashley Fazens, and we'll show them to you in a moment here. 25 is Kaniqua. There we go. There you see Miss Jones, Miss Williams, rather. And the final player to be introduced was Jasmine Lipford. 
And you see a great picture of each of them. If you didn't see our coverage the other night of the Hampton Bethel game, Andy, our main man, spent minutes, even even hours, <laughs> doing these graphics to get these All young ladies' pictures. Uh, great job. Yeah, I tell you, did a super <laughs> job with it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our ladies' panel, starting in car, our five-foot junior number 10, the Chelsea. And guard, up high seven, senior number 21, Cassie Hosey. And guard, up high seven, sophomore number 33, Chippendale. Jackson and Ford, a 15 junior, number 32, Christina Perry. And Ford, a 15 sophomore, number 23, Felicia Austin. And the fan of the coach by Barbara Burgess and Anthony Norton. And there you have the starters for the Lady Phantoms. As I mentioned, they are six and five in the district, eight and six overall. Bethel two and ten, four and eleven overall. We're also going to tell you in a moment who's helping bring this contest to you. Our corporate sponsors for tonight's game. We'll mention those in just a moment. The officials for tonight's contest: Leonard Whitfield and Sharon Toomer. It's not a tumor. Too much, <laughs> not a too much. And uh, <laughs> Leonard will be the referee. There you see the names of the officials now. And we'll tell you who's uh, our corporate sponsors in just a few moments. Right now the game is set to get underway. The jump ball, the only one of the game, is finally controlled by the homestanding Lady Phantoms. They move the ball quickly toward the hoop. Shot is a little too strong. Offensive rebound and a foul underneath for the first whistle of tonight's ball game. So uh, I believe uh, her friends, here are the sponsors tonight. Zooms with 14 convenient peninsula locations to serve you. Game is brought to you by Zooms once again. <laughs> Thought we'd just throw that in there twice. They're such good sponsors. There you go, they are. Also the game brought to you by Hampton Chevrolet at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard in Hampton. And in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home. Call them at 827-4670. Nancy Staten is the manager. All right, so each team has had an opportunity and neither has been able to score. So we're just 30 seconds into the contest. And this is the second opportunity on offense for the Phantoms. Their little point guard, number 10, Tim, is just a, a, a fire plug, just Michelle Russell does such a good job out there running and, this offense. And her shot was short, but Christina Parrish got the rebound and stuck it in to give the Phantoms a 2-0 lead. This is Johnson, short. And a rebound foul will be charged against Jones. That will be her second. Well, that's two quick fouls. Yeah, that'll bring in some uh, substitutions real quickly, so that's not what Brian Weaver wanted to see happen to have his starter pick up two fouls and we've only played one minute. So that really, you know, if you're the coach and you've been a coach before, you know this really changes your game plan. Well, right it really back. does, Tim, and, and both of them were rebounding fouls and she was just not in position. And when you're not in position, you've got to be back off. Let the, the other guy get the ball and then try to take it away from them when they get it down, but don't go over the back. And we've got a uh, out of bounds play. Could have been a foul, would have been the third, but it was called a uh, an out of bounds play, so the Bruins will get the ball back. Two nothing, Phantoms. Williams put the shot up, it doesn't go. And the rebound comes back to the Phantoms. And that is number 21, Cassie Alston. Foul on the shot is taking the, uh, the shot was Chanel Jackson. Tim, we will pick a player of the game for both of these teams tonight. They, they Each player will receive a trophy in the shirt. The trophy comes from Trophy World, and they're located in the historic Hilton Village in Newport News. For all your recognition and award needs, trophies, plaques, and custom engraving, contact Bob Henley at Trophy World 
595-7354. You mentioned this announcement. Get special pricing. The shirt comes from Tidewater Team Sports, your one-stop sports headquarters with screen printing, embroidery, and uniforms, and apparel. Call 594-0411. Talk to David Chubb or Terry McNamara. Phantoms, Michelle Russell, top of the key. Both teams playing man-to-man, -man and a lot of contact. They're not shy. In the lane, the nice drive by Alston, Kamisha Alston, and she draws the foul. Foul will be charged to Ashley Spriggs, number 22. Yeah, we had a little problem with the, the numbers last week, and I think we got them squared away. Zooms has given award to the senior player on each of the teams this year has demonstrated academic excellence. These players be awarded plaques at a school board meeting after the season. We'd like to thank David Allen and Zooms for their continued support to WHCS and our student athletes. One out of two for Austin. Kamisha Austin. Also Cassie Austin on the same squad. A oh, nice way to break. That's a good way to break the, the uh, uh, press number 22 uh, Spriggs got the, the ball, but they moved the ball by passing it Tim and against a, a press like that That'll get the ball down quicker than anything else Three-pointer in and out Follow shot nice is rebound. good. Good job on the offensive board by Kamisha Alston So she's got three of her team's five and then the Bruins throw it away Hampton Chevrolet Jeep Mazda, give them a call at 838-5450, located at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard. See a good look at Brian Weaver with a bit of a chagrin on his face. I think he goes to your barber, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got the same hair, hairstylist. Oh, you call him hairstylist instead of barbers, huh? <laughs> I call mine the old trusty razor. Oh. <laughs> I just shave it. Now come the Phantoms leading five to two. That was just a little overpassing that time, Tim. The uh, young lady passed the ball underneath the basket. Uh, the young lady got, got the ball stole, but she had a good opportunity for a shot. And Ron Baton got run into. On that play. Oh, Ron's used to that. He's, oh, he bounced right up. No blood, no foul. And we've got a timeout call because the Bruins were not going to get it across the 10-second no, line. and that was a smart, uh, was a 30-second timeout, I believe, the coach. Yep, and here's what happens when you're the camera down <laughs> on, the, uh, on the end line there. <laughs> a little instant replay of uh, Ron as he looks to be okay, none the worse. He's been hit harder than that. Oh, I tell you, we've seen him take some tumbles in football. <laughs> yeah, well, I need one of those. You know, those things I can do the little drawings That's on. just what you need. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, circle people. John Madden Jr. <laughs> so, you know, go this way. Of course, my hand. <laughs> I bet you it will never be a straight line. 452 left here in the first period. Bruins trailing by three. They get it across the timeline this time. Spriggs See, has it. Spriggs should shoot the ball. She yeah, was she right there. She had the shot and didn't take it. And then pretty heavy contact, and the foul will be whistled down against number 24, Renee Lancaster. That'll be her first. So Brian Weaver will get Jasmine Lipford back in the game, and out will come Renee Lancaster. So we're stuck on 5-2 to two here. The Phantoms will bring it across the timeline. Alston on the baseline, pretty good block, but must have gotten there with the body. Uh, you're talking about the uh, Phoebus coach doing a good job over here, Tim. She actually teaches at Hampton High School and coaches over here. That's got to be a little bit of a conflict when they play each other. Spriggs picks up her second, so two of the Lady Bruins have a pair of fouls here in the early going, and that will, uh, again, Create substitutions. Spriggs will come out, and in her place will come 24 Renee Lancaster right back in. She had just come out, and she'll return now because of the foul problems with Spriggs. One out of two again, so uh, Kamisha Alston has hit two of four. 
alternating good shots with bad. Bad pass stolen and the easy basket. Nice play by Chanel Jackson. She stole the inbounds pass for the easy bucket. Johnson double teamed in the backcourt. Does a good job of getting across the timeline. Feed down low. Turn around. Shot is no good. Follow shot okay, is good. Right. That ball got deflected right into uh, Lipford's hands. And uh, Jasmine just put it right in. Nice move to evade the defense and the bank shot by Cassie Alston. Her first point. So the scoring picks up a little bit. 10 to 4 in favor of the homestanding Phantoms. This game video taped on the 31st of January, 2003. Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, and Mike Hauser coming to you from Phoebus High School. The Phantom Country is all over the yeah, place. Had the pleasure the of seeing our good friend Bill D, the athletic director and head coach of the football team here at Phoebus High School. He was, uh, as usual, talking football with me. And he was awarded... National Coach uh, of the you. Year. Yes. And uh, unbeknownst to me, and I, he said it was in the paper, and I, I obviously it. Missed was it was in the paper. Well, no, not that. Oh. Second part. The uh, Phantoms at the end of the season were ranked 25th in the country. I don't know if you saw that or not. I, I didn't did see not. that. I didn't no. either, but he said it was in the paper. But they uh, were ranked 25th team in the country. Pretty strong stuff. And he's got a lot of those guys coming back next year. Uh, he's got a good nucleus coming back, Tim. He's got to uh, come up with a quarterback and, uh, and you know, got to replace people like Adibi and uh, Jason Bowles and uh, Quest King and some of those big kids. But he's he got some kids got some good experience this year that uh, were not starters. So uh, he's got some, a good nucleus coming back and uh, had a good JV team. He continues to reload every year. Yep. So again, Brian Weaver continues to uh, substitute as Ashley Faison comes in and Letitia Thomas comes out. 10-4. That's not good, buddy. That's 10-4 is the score. Rebound comes off to Johnson. She lost the dribble for a moment, got it right back. I was talking with her uh, her daddy, and I was commenting about what a good ball handler she is. And she is, she does handle ball real well, but sometimes she just she gets a little bit out of control because of the, the pace is a little faster, but that she's not the only one. She does handle ball well. Here's the replay of that previous action before the ball was knocked out of bounds. Uh, I need to talk about her crew a little bit when I get a chance. Shot is no good, but a foul has been called. And just real quickly to finish that thought on sure. Veronica Johnson, she is recovering from an ACL injury. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that, but uh, she certainly doesn't look to any worse to wear for it. No, she uh, it shows no ill effects of it, is not wearing any brace or anything on her knee, uh, and is, is not tentative because, she, you know, you see her running up and down the floor, it doesn't uh, act like that's a, a problem or could be a problem. At the free throw line, Shanna Jones, and she misses the first of two. There you see the scoreboard, 251 remaining here in the first period. And the lead, 10-4, had been 5-2, so the Phantoms have been able to double that lead. Well, actually, they both doubled mm -hmm. their score. But they doubled the lead, too. Yeah. Offensive board, so the uh, Bruins, that's the second time that they've gotten a loose ball underneath there for the easy basket. That was Renee Lancaster that time. And it cuts the Phoebus lead to four. <clears throat> Bethel's in a, in a zone trying to protect their uh, big, big people because of the uh, foul trouble. And we've got a loose ball and then a tie up. Possession arrow will give the ball to the Phantoms. Barbara Burgess, the head coach over there. Haven't seen a, a lot of her in their camera yet, but we'll get her on there for you. She does not go to the same barber that I do. <laughs> but Brian does. Deep in the corner, shot is off the mark. 
Johnson with the rebound. One on one with Alston. A little too strong on the rebound. The Bruins had it but lost it. Cassie Alston, no, won't oh, stay down. A couple of near misses. Well, those, both of those balls look like they oh, may they, go in, and neither one of them did. So this is Alston at the top of the key, picked up by Johnson. Veronica's daddy was telling me how proud he is of her in many respects, that she's a good person on top of being a good basketball player, which is so very important to hear these days. Whitney Hill will go to the free throw line. They had a lot of fouls here in the early going. You really have. In fact, so many that the Phantoms are in the bonus from this point forward for the first half with a buck 36 to go on the clock. Well, with we see Barbara Burgess. One gal get two, just boom, boom like that within yeah. the first minute. And, and then another one got two more, just same way. And then you two, your uh, your rebounders, that, that kind of hurts you. So Hill gets the first. The Phantoms will be one and one from here on. And the second one won't go down. So three out of six from the free throw line for the Phantoms. Got her own rebound, no good. Michelle Russell, smallest player on the court with the rebound. Pass in the corner for Alston. Set shot, don't see those too often these days. Nice tip to keep the ball alive. Again, the uh, diminutive Russell with the rebound and scores. Michelle Russell makes it 13 to six. <clears throat> there you see the score down in your corner. <coughs> My microphone makes a lot of noise when I move it. <laughs> I must have yours because I, I, mine doesn't usually make that kind of noise. Does yours make noise? I don't. You not it? like it did during the <laughs> national anthem. <laughs> that, was, no, was that was that you? <laughs> that was you. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Three pointer short. Long rebound. Bruins keep it alive. Under a minute remaining in the first period. And now it's stolen by Russell. Left wing pass. Nice feed. Good oh, bucket. But nice catch and, and put up. Assist to Russell. Basket to Hill as the timeout called by the Bruins as uh, Brian Weaver does not want this game to get away from yeah, him. Yeah, get a little upset. Talk, Andre to, talk about the crowd. Lee. We got Andre back tonight <laughs> on the uh, Insta replay. Lakeisha Porter's here. Scotty Bowers taking care of everything. Mike Dewinsky's was helping out and then left. Uh, Andy Foley's doing the graphics. We got uh, Don Shirouse making sure everything is running. John Moore and Ricky Brown are both on cameras. One's on the one end line, one's up along, up there with uh, Nathaniel Braxton. Of course, we've got Ron Baton down at this end. So the full crew tonight. I haven't seen is Susan here. No, Susan's not here. She's taking a class. <clears throat> okay. That's my excuse for next Friday night. <laughs> you you're not gonna be here next Friday night? No, I won't be here. You better be. It's a kid. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, if I was going to miss a game, this would have been the one. <laughs> That's right. I'll be here. You can't keep me away. Thirty-two point six seconds remaining in the first period. Ruins now trying to trigger in. Can't stolen. Russell uh, wisely kicks it outside. We've got whistles. We've got that three, three seconds. seconds. Yep. I was wondering if they really going to call that. <coughs> so one of the Phantoms camped out in the lane too long. So the Bruins will get it back. But they're having difficulty inbounding against this pressure. And this time they have it. I think it, thought it might have been deflected, but I guess not. No, she just. She threw it with both hands, yeah. and one hand had a better. Somebody did catch it. I Mike thought so. Said somebody got a hold of it. They I, got a I touch. I thought so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it changed direction. I thought you uh, uh, you almost bought what you said. It, it, it appeared to be either of those, but uh, did look like it was deflected. So the Bruins will keep it. 17.4 remaining. And Johnson will trigger. And again, it's stolen. 
Russell, nice blind feed. What a nice oh. play. <laughs> That's the second assist. Whitney Hill's going to be putting something extra uh, in the Christmas stocking for Michelle Russell. Two great feeds and two baskets for Hill. Quite a little playmaker is Michelle Russell. And the shot does not count. Had it gone, it would not have counted as the buzzer sounded just before she got it away. But, but we've played one. What's killing Bethel right now, Tim, is they can't get the ball in uh, cleanly off of a missed shot or an out-of-bounds or something underneath their own basket. They're turning the ball over. I don't know how many turnovers if Mike's got them or not, but there's got to be a, just a ton of turnovers that the uh, Bruins have, have uh, committed and, and at Phoebus's end of the basket. Well, we'll be able to give you those statistics momentarily. Oh, no, Mike might have those things. Well, Mike is not instantaneous. He's, but he's not. Pretty damn close. Darn close. <laughs> Can I say? Him? I can't say. That's that. what I thought you said. He's pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Zooms has that bean town coffee, fried chicken, potato wedges, Krispy Kreme donuts. Get them boxing one like two. Ham and cheese subs, Coke, and then fill your car with that good Sitco gas. And if you want some pizza, they got good pizza there too. Mm. Check them out. That's what I think I'm going to have tonight. I'm going to stop at the Zooms up by my place on the way home. I ate a late lunch, so I wouldn't be famished. Uh, you were kind enough to give me some uh, pistachios. Give me a little head, heads up yes. on it. Yeah. yeah I get used to new cars down at Hampton Chevrolet Jeep Mazda, 1073 West Mercury Boulevard, 838-5450. Second period underway. The Bruins, no, can't get the shot to go. Williams will follow and got it. So Brooke Williams gets her first basket of the night and it cuts the lead to nine. And Bethel's in a one-two-two two zone. 17 to eight. And that oh, one off the nice, glass. Nice, nice <laughs> basket. That was 33, right, Jackson? Yeah. Looked away for a minute. Williams and she traveled. Good call. Looked like was. she... Uh, just didn't get the pass away. She might have mishandled it for a moment, but uh, referee Sharon Toomer called the turnover. <coughs> Brian Weaver is on the court. Be careful, he's liable to get himself teed up here. First quarter shooting for the Bruins. They were just four of 16, 25%. No free throw complete, 0 for 2 and six turnovers. Here's a little replay action there. You see Jackson making the big effort to save the ball, but couldn't quite do it. Oh, no, that wasn't Jackson. That was Johnson. I said Jackson. Johnson. Yeah. We've been talking about it. We better make sure we got her name right. Her daddy's pretty good size. <laughs> oh, I've been, shoot, I've given her more airtime than you tonight. <laughs> Phoebus on the other side, 7 of 17, 41%. Considerably better from the field. 3 of 6 free throws, just 4 turnovers. So, even though it may have seemed like the uh, the Bruins had considerably more turnovers, they only had six to four well, it in seemed the like it was they That the ones that they did make seemed to be right underneath their own basket. And you don't, that takes away an offensive possession. You don't even get it down across half court to, to even to attempt a shot, so. Lipford misses the first of two. Ashley Faison will come in for Johnson. Come the Phantoms and a pass off the mark. Michelle Russell set to get back in. She will come in for Whitney Hill and uh, also coming out is Janelle Womack replaced by Kamisha Alston. I got Cassie <laughs> Alston. Well, I got a Cassie and a Kamisha. No, I thought it was 21 that came in. Was it not 21? No, it was 23. Oh, well, there you go. It must be sisters. Could be. Might not be. Well, I think they are. They look alike. <laughs> you 
<laughs> so if they're not, you're going to make them anyway, right? <laughs> so, well, no, nobody so, told me they weren't. So, girls, if you're not sisters, Bob just made you sisters. That's right. Buy each other present. <laughs> they might be twins. Well, no, that could be, too. Deep in the corner, three-pointer off the mark. Johnson had the ball and lost oh, she's it. She's getting, she getting cream. <clears throat> yeah, she got pretty well mugged there. And uh, Brian Weaver asking the referee, Whitfield, uh, what do you got to do? <laughs> Phantoms will inbound the ball. In and out. Rebound in the hands of Ashley Faison. Williams will fire it up. Got it. Good. In transition. Coach love to see it. Uh, baskets made in transition. Lead is 10. You get it done before the defense gets a chance to set up. Bethel's back in their man to man. They've been playing combination of man to man and zone. Alston had it knocked out of her hands. They'll say it still belongs to the Phantoms. And that should be a backcourt by oh. <laughs> uh, Sharon Toomer is uh, telling Brian Weaver something, but she clearly missed that call. Yeah. That ball went into the backcourt, and the player had it in the forecourt and stepped on the line. Stepped on and then stepped. And then stepped into the backcourt. Yeah, that was clearly an over, <laughs> over and back that did not get called. Unless she didn't have control of the ball when she was doing that. Yeah, that's a good point. But she, uh, and to her credit, the referee very quietly told Brian Weaver to sit down. <laughs> well, he never did sit down, but he <laughs> shut up, maybe. <laughs> well, I didn't say that. He, uh, there's an area that they're allowed to walk in, and I think she uh, reinforced that area for him. Stolen by Johnson. A one on three. No, she just can't get that ball to fall tonight. And again, a little now Michelle traveling. Russell with traveling the rebound. That time. I thought that might be a foul there. Yeah, that could have been called a foul. Looked like they got a pretty good uh, contact with her, but not called that way. Watch the replay of the shot by Johnson. Just wouldn't go. And then right here, yeah, she just bumped pretty good. Got a little help in her travel. Williams' shot is well off the mark. Chased down in the corner by Christina Parrish. 440 left in the first half. There you see your score 21 11 in favor of the Phantoms. And we've got a reach in foul is going to be called on Ashley Faison. Several of the fans behind us thought it was a good defensive play. Yeah, that might have been. There wasn't a whole lot of contact. We've had more contact than that tonight. So at the free throw line, because of the one and one, will be Whitney Hill. She is one of two so far. But when you do it out in the front court yeah. with nobody else around, yeah. they're going to call it nine times out of ten. When you told me something once, too, when, when the defender has to reach around and hits the ball, it's going to be the automatic assumption of the official that she had to make contact with yep. the body. Yep. See, I remember you told me that. That was a long time ago, too. And you got a good memory, just like that elephant, huh? That's right, Jim. <laughs> 23-11. Phantoms on the short end of the, and the, on the, on the, on the high zone. end of the, of the score, I should say. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, and they're in a nice zone. It's really Bruins, and we've got a reach-in foul. Had a little slow whistle on it, but the great call was made. Phantoms with a considerably better record. Eight and six overall. Just four and 11 for Ryan Weaver's squad. Bethel needs to run that same inbounds play and then give the ball right back to uh, Johnson bringing the ball inbounds because nobody picked her up after she threw the ball inbounds. Tim, she's right underneath the basket. Another rebound for Russell and her pass just a little too long. She's got the right idea. 
And she said she's appealing that it went off of a Bruin, but I think the right call was made. It looked like it just barely grazed the fingertips of one of her teammates. So Johnson will bring it across the timeline as we are at the 343 mark here in the first half. Johnson's just an excellent ball handler. Open for the three, shot won't go. Offensive board, no good. Johnson chases it down and is able to save it to Williams. Williams pass in the corner to Johnson. And Johnson is fouled as she goes by. Uh, she like, was hooked. <laughs> yeah. In, in uh, hockey, they'd say hooking two minutes. <laughs> And foul the Bruins still are not in the uh, yeah. one and one, are they? Uh, <laughs> yeah, hooking. Uh, it must be. Well, they're they're at the free throw line. Yeah, well, that, she was shooting the ball. I think she was. I guess they ruled she was shooting. Yeah. So she gets the first. See a real good look at the uh, senior point guard. Great smile. And she gets both. Got the uh, shooter's bounce. 23-13, the lead again cut to 10. Phantoms on top. Phantoms weaving, trying to set a play up. Good sticky man-to-man -man defense being employed and almost stole the ball. Now they do. Brooke Williams. And she gets it. She gets the throw. She's got six points here in the first half, and the lead is down to eight. So they've cut it under that double-digit lead. Penetration stops the dribble, and it's stolen. Johnson anticipated the pass nicely. Got a two-on-two, -two, decides to hold up. No advantage. Williams pass is off the fingertips. Good idea. Did you know yep. the Bruins lost uh, Dorsey, Amber Do Dorsey? Remember from last year, she was a pivot player, very good, and they got injured and they missed the rest of the season, and that's really hurt the Bruins. She was she had played three years. At, uh, this would have been her third year, I think, on the varsity. Kamisha Austin. Guarded by Spriggs. Shot is too strong. And the rebound comes off to Lipford. Under two minutes to go. And a pass too hot to handle. Idea was there, but it was just a little too hard for the player to, to catch it. Foul in the lane. That'll be called against Johnson. And as mentioned, the Bruins have been over the limit for quite some time. The, I, I would have think that by now they might even be in the double bonus. Secret probation. All that stuff. <laughs> You've been watching Animal House. Ah, again. yeah, watched it again the other night. Secret double? Secret double probation. <laughs> That's right. Easy for me to say. I can only watch that thing about another hundred times. So. I do that. Uh, that and Blues Brothers. Yeah. I can watch. I'm talking to the original Blues yeah, the Brothers. Original, yeah. Oh, man. That, yeah. Those two just, the guess music you, is good. And the action is just it's great. I guess you might say we're a couple of Bellucci fans. Yeah, I think so. So Whitney Hill hits both of her free throws, and the lead is back to 10. Bruins will push it up now with a minute 30 left in the first half. Open player in the corner. Williams. Oh, nice de defense that time. Tried to feed it down low to Renee Lancaster, and then uh, her defense was good enough to cause the Phantoms to turn it over. So the Bruins get it right back. Cassie also did a great job of stepping in front and getting the ball, but then lost it. But what a great defensive uh, move. 
You could see on that replay how the defender for the Bruins batted it out of her hand and knocked it off of the Phoebus player's knee. Great uh, camera work. Our crew does a great job. Williams top of the key to Johnson on the right wing. Now back to Williams. Johnson drives and penetrates, and she is fouled, they say, before the shot. Foul will be charged against Chanel Jackson. It's still, still they're not on the, uh, I don't know, that looked like to me she got fouled as she was going up in the act of shooting. Yep. But they, he said it was prior to the shot. No, he, he was emphatic about that, too. Yeah. He, he pointed to the lane and said no before. The shot. Spriggs got the rebound. Shot won't go. Got her own rebound and put it up and in. So Ashley Spriggs has four points and the lead back down to eight. In the lane, shot up too strong. And we've got contact. Let's see how they call this one. Now Ashley Spriggs doing a great job on both ends of the board, uh, on the board on both ends of the basket. So. Still aren't into one and one yet. Still not shooting, but they'll have the ball on the possession. Forty-two point four seconds. Again, there's no shot clock in high school ball. They do have to get across the timeline, but the, the Bruins could hold it for the last shot. I don't think they will, but they could. The Phantoms are running a 2-3 zone and then are immediately are trapping. Three-pointer, oh, look good. Nice Spriggs. rebound. And she had it blocked, started to say foul, but now there is a foul call. She went up high, Tim, and what made that such a nice rebound is she caught it at the top of her jump. And uh, not coming down, not standing there waiting for the ball. She went up and got the ball. And finally, now the Bruins are in the finally. bonus. <laughs> Melody and Wilson. And it does no good because this is a two-shot foul, right. right? Melody Wilson got the foul, her first. So both teams over the limit now. And no good on the first one from Lancaster. And neither one will stay down for Renee Lancaster. So back come the Phantoms with 15 seconds remaining. Yeah. Heavy contact, no foul. Could have been one or the other, offense or defense, but they, no call. Well, a foul is called after that. Yeah, that, that was a lot of contact for not having a foul called. Somebody appeared to commit a foul. Cassie Austin does get whistled after that play. So it'll send Brooke Williams to the free throw line. One and one. There you see 6.1 seconds on the clock till halftime. And no bonus coming. Ball was lost out of bounds. Last oh, they touch. give it to the Bruins. I uh, thought it happens. went off the Bruins. Nope. So they'll have one last opportunity. This one way downtown. And the buzzer will sound to end the first half. So that infamous lead of 10 and 8 and 10 and 8 ends it up at 8. That's better than a 10. Yep. So if the, you're the Bruins. If you're the Bruins. So at halftime, our score is Phoebus 25 and Bethel 17. We'll return to Phoebus High School for the third period of action after this brief timeout. Time as the teams are back on the court, warming up. 
Tim Cole with Bob Hintz, and we are here at Phoebus High School as the teams have returned. In the first half, Bethel shooting 8 of 30 for just 27%. They were 3 of 9 from the free throw line for 33%. Yeah, and that really hurts you. Yeah, and, and 12 turnovers, 19 rebounds for the Bruins. The right rebounding is pretty even, 18 for the Phantoms. They were 9 of 24 for 38% from the field. They hit 7 of 10 free throws for 70%. But the turnover is identical. It yeah, but see, there's your difference in the game, yeah. Tim. 70%, 7 of 10, and 3 of 9. So you, you look at that difference, and we got a much closer game. we got an eight-point eight, eight point game, which is not a uh, unsurmountable lead to, to overcome. But, you know, if you make your free throws, you, you miss your one-on-ones, it just kills you. Whitney Hill, the leading scorer, with nine points for the Phantoms, four points each for Kamisha Alston and Chanel Jackson. And then two points each for Christina Parrish, Janelle Womack, and Cassie Alston. For the Bruins, they were paced by Brooke Williams with six points. Four points for Veronica Johnson, as well as Ashley Spriggs. And three points for Jasmine Lipford. Two points for Renee Lancaster. 25-17 as we start the third. And this is Spriggs with a rebound. Well, and Bruins come out in a 2-1-2 zone or a 2-3 zone. And uh, immediately uh, tried to, to keep keep the uh, Bruins from going on the board because the Bruins have been hitting the offensive board right well, right? And then they come down at this end and they throw the ball away. So I know Brian, uh, uh, Coach Brian, uh, is we, just you know he's just a little upset right now. He's thinking you know we could do better. Got to protect the ball. And the Bruins will get it off of the Phantom turnover. And Nikki Jones did a good job that time for the Bruins, Tim, just basically keeping her body uh, between the uh, the ball and, and the uh, <coughs> Phantom so that the ball went out of bounds and they got it. So that was a good move on her part. Back to a man-to-man. -man. And the Phantom's man-to-man, -man, and then they double when the ball, especially when it goes down into the uh, – to the corner because if you get them in the corner then you got the two out of bounds there and it really it takes away a lot of options. Johnson will trigger. <laughs> nice job of finding the open player. Good block. Oh good block. You're right there. Kamisha Austin with the block and steal. Parrish will try the long jumper and hits it. We've got a foul underneath. Let's see how this one goes. The basket, I believe, is going to count. Let's see how they. The basket is good. So they they get the, the three-point shot. If they get the three-point shot. Nice block right there. Good camera work. Uh, and then they get the ball out of bounds because of the foul. So the, and there is your three-pointer and the foul underneath the basket. <laughs> 28-17 in favor of the Phantoms. They steal the ball. And Johnson knocks it loose. They've got numbers if they can quickly move the ball. Johnson will try the long three, doesn't get it. And battle for the loose ball. It's still loose. And now Spriggs got it and then got fouled. I tell you, that was, that was very, I'd hate to try to explain that on radio. I mean, <laughs> what kind of. A lot of action. Watch it. You won't need to because we're doing television. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you think so, Scotty? Good look at young Miss Springs. Spriggs in and out. And that ball rattled around and popped out. I kind of remember that one now. So one out of two for Ashley Spriggs.
One thing that the zone will do, though, you got some holes in the zone, but it does open up the three-point play, and if you do drive in, that you're going to pick up a foul, and that's exactly what happened there. Tim, we will pick a player from the game for both of these teams tonight. Each player receive a trophy and a shirt. The trophy comes from Trophy World, located in the historic Hilton Village in Newport News. For all, you all, for all your recognition and award needs, trophies, headquarters, uh, trophies, plaques, custom engraving, <laughs> contact Bob Henley at Trophy World. 595-7354. Mention this announcement, get special pricing. The shirt comes from Tidewater Team Sports. You want to stop sports headquarters for screen printing, embroidery, and uniforms apparel. Call 594-0411. Talk to Dave Chubb or Terry McNamara. T-Mac. One out of two. And the lead is 11. Johnson. Oh, nice, nice pass, but we're going to get an offensive oh foul. <clears throat> he was in the air. Watch, Watch this. this. Yep, good, good job of the yeah. defender getting planted. It did appear as though she was there. Bruins in that zone. Brian Weaver telling his team to get their hands up. None of them are. I, it, I think they wait for the ball to get to the player that they're guarding in the zone before they oh, have a turnover. And then the ball kicked and and everything. And lots of stuff going on. A little dance step there between uh, Miss Johnson and uh, but Riffrey kicking the ball. Whitfield. That was not a violation. As if you use it playing defense is the violation. She just happened to. Ball was uh, tangled up in her feet, and he called it uh, kicking the ball. Well, there was a nice little push. Yeah, it didn't get called. Loose ball chased and finally controlled by the Bruins. They are down by 10. Seems they're either 8 or 10 points behind for the better part of this game. Steel Hill got it. So Whitney Hill has double digits. She has 11, and the lead is 11. Actually, it's 12. I like. <laughs> well, there you go. I wouldn't tell on you. <laughs> no, but the math whizzes out there would have spotted it before too long, I'm afraid. <laughs> Second half is brought to you in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home, conveniently located at Hampton Roads. No, Hampton, Hampton Center, Center Parkway and North Armstead Avenue. You travel that uh, new extension area there, there that goes oh, to Harpersville Road. Oh, so much time. Yeah, it goes all the way to Harpersville yeah. now. Neat. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Manager Nancy yeah. Staten. Ten million dollars a, a Mike foot. Mike says he uses that. Yeah. Hopefully someone does. Yeah, it's supposed to cut a lot of time if you use Mercury Boulevard. Stolen by Hill. Got it again. I tell you, she's. Uh, Good job of making that, that hard drive and layup. 13 points for Hill. And Brian Weaver says we need a timeout. Yeah, we do. Zoom's given an award to the senior player on each of these teams this year has demonstrated academic excellence. These players be awarded plaques at a school board meeting after the season. We'd like to thank David Allen and Zoom's for the continuing support of WACS and our student athletes. And of course, don't forget one of our other corporate sponsor, Hampton. Jeep <laughs> Mazda. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was you again, right? This <laughs> like, a, like a rock. <laughs> 1073 West Mercury Boulevard. Someone bring me a screwdriver. 838-5450. <laughs> I'll get it out of here in a minute. I got a little uh, sinus problem. <laughs> well, I, don't have I think you cleaned it up. I don't have a cough button on my microphone. <laughs> well, then the only thing is, Tim, is don't cough. Don't call. cough, I know. Yeah. Huh? That's the other choice. Four twelve left in the third period. Fourteen point lead, the biggest lead of the night for the Phantoms. Johnson, a little bit out of control. Oh, again, offensive foul. Yep, that's what happens when I say a little out of control. She is going going helter skelter. And just barges into the players. But you know, it. if the player is not set, oh, that's yeah. not a that's not a charge. No, that, no. And that girl was not; she was moving yeah. into that spot. So I don't think that was uh, a correct call. But uh, I'm not one of the uh, zebras. 
want to remind you, we'll have the boys' contest between these two schools as well. As the shot from the top of the key, Whitney Hill is just hitting from every place, high, low, and everywhere in between. To watch it here on Channel 46. The boys' game will be shown as well. Shot no good from deep in the corner. 16-point lead and the ball. Hill at the top of the key. Now the Phantoms decide to set it up. Well, they could be can, they can be very uh, cautious with if they need to, but there's the gal that can hit the three-pointer, and that's Christine Parrish. She has uh, got a nice. I think her name touch. is Christina. Christina Parrish. I think you're right. But anyway, she is uh, was a player of the game when we were out here uh, about a couple of weeks ago. Back on the 6th of January, as a matter of fact, I think it was. 7th. 7th? Yep. Okay, yeah, I came back on the 6th. It snowed, and we had it on the That's right. No snow where I came from. but <laughs> We've had it here. Yeah. Our next contest will be next Friday night. We'll be at Kickatan High School. So. Oh, well, then that game would be at Hampton, not at Kickatan. They've already played there. We'll have to. I'll do some checking on that, Scotty. So we may be at Hampton High. That would help me. <laughs> oh, off, off the, the glass. glass. You've you got to call that when you're playing horse. Cassie Austin expands the lead now to 19. Ball knocked into the backcourt. Williams guarded by Austin. And yeah, a little, little uh, traveler music. <clears throat> Shauna Jones is going to come in for Brooke Williams, for Brian Williams, Lady Bruins. Watch the replay here of the shot. Full court pressure being applied by the Bruins. Handled pretty easily by the Phantoms. Oh, Christine nice Parrish. Look pass inside. And then a foul. Kamisha Alston will go to the free throw line. Watch his pass right there. Beautiful. You're watching the Lady Phantoms of Phoebus and the Lady Bruins of Bethel High School. This game videotaped on the 31st of January 2003. Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, and Mike Hauser coming to you from Phoebus. Short with the second. So we had a Lean violation. The shooter knew it was going to be short, and she went yep. across the, the line before the ball hit the grim. There you see the scoreboard. Time remaining in the third period. That one goes off the foot. Brian Weaver says no, it went off of one of the Phantoms. <laughs> yeah, we need to get shot of Brian. He, he's very active. He's like I'd be if I were the coach, especially when I knew they blew a call. Back come the Bruins off of the steal. Good job to get back by Hill, but oh, a nice good. job. That was a pretty play by Letitia Thomas. Yes, did a good job. <clears throat> she waited till Hill set her feet, and then she just did a step around. Drew was back in the man to man. That zone was just wasn't doing it for him. Hill got the offensive board and drew the foul. So CC Allman picks up the foul, her second. Watch this move right here. Who and just right on around her, up and in. Yep, that was pretty. So Hill, who has hit five of six, make that six of seven from the free throw line. 17 points unofficially on the night, nine in the first half. She's added eight here in the third period. She's just been really, excuse me, seven here in the third period. Now she would have had eight if you hadn't have jinxed her. Yeah. <laughs> 
A minute 16 to go in the third. Bruins just get it across the timeline. And another traveling call, I believe, yep. That's the uh, same player, same dance. Yeah, She's got to remember she does a little fake, but you can't fake yeah, that. She, yeah, like with her feet, she just yeah. does like a little quick two-step there. Yeah. Unfortunately, they require you to dribble the ball before you can do that. So it's one of those little quirks of the game. Got the right idea. She wants to fake him out. Phantoms turn it over. Johnson's pass. And uh, batted around a little bit. The Bruins got it back and then got fouled. Michelle Russell gets called for the foul. You see the Phantom cheerleaders. And now a real good look at Renee Lancaster <clears throat> from our under the cam under the basket camera, Ron Baton. So after missing her first two free throws, Lancaster hits. Offensive rebound. Yeah, good hand. Who put that in? Yeah, that Veronica over. Johnson. So Johnson gets her first bucket. And that ball misses everything, and the Bruins will get it with 31.9 seconds. <laughs> Bruins down by 15. Under 20 seconds remaining. Russell. Johnson almost stole it, but stepped on the baseline. <clears throat> I can't believe my headset squeaks like that. Oh, what behind a pass. The, behind the back, well. Look, it's a good idea. Yeah. It wasn't a great pass, but it was a good idea. Yeah. 8.6 seconds remaining, and uh, Barbara Burgess will get a late substitution in. Jenny Pierce, number 11, checks in. And Bruin will try to get the last shot off here. It's a three-pointer, no good, and the rebound comes to... The Phantoms' Janelle Womack and the buzzer sounds to end the third period with the Phantoms leading 39 to 24. As the Phantoms outscored the Bruins 14 to 7 in the period. Now, Tim, uh, Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home is uh, one of our corporate sponsors during the second half. Managers Nancy State, and they're located in Hampton Parkway. Hampton Center Parkway, North Armstead Avenue. For a tour of the facilities, stop by or give them a call at 827 4670. And while you're driving around, stop in one of our 14 convenient Zoom locations and get some of that good Bean Town coffee, fried chicken, pizza, potato wedges, Krispy Kreme donuts, ham and cheese subs, and Coca Cola. And of course, you can always fill up your car with a good Sitco gas. I think pizza is my, my fare tonight. That sounds better and better all the time. Got a couple of slices on my way home from the Zooms. I did uh, did consume most of my gasoline this week, so it would be a good chance to fill up. Fill her well. up. There you go. And don't forget Hampton Chevrolet Jeep Mazda, located at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard. Give them a call, 838-5450. Good time to buy a car right now. The interest oh, rates, wow. they've really got great interest rates and great deals on 2003 models. Stolen by the Bruins. Johnson will try the three. It's short. 
And again, the shortest player on the court gets the rebound. She's got about a half a dozen rebounds. Well, and what she does is she does a good job of boxing out. She boxed out uh, Veronica that time on that shot, Tim, and the ball came right, bounced right back to the shooter, and uh, and there uh, Michelle was waiting for the rebound. So you don't have to be big. And there you saw the foul as Johnson pushed Hill to pick up the first foul, her fourth. Third quarter stats for the Phantoms. Two of, excuse me, Phantoms five of 14 from the field, two of six from the free throw line and six turnovers. The Bruins just two of six, 33% again, two of four from the free throw line and seven TOs for Bethel. Mike Hauser providing those quick and accurate statistics for us. Appreciate that, Mike. So Whitney Hill, who's had a really good evening, continues to score. She does a good job from the foul line. She's she? just a freshman, too. I know. I've seen that. I'm telling you, Barbara Burge has got to be happy with, uh, I don't know what her averages are like for the year, but certainly if it's anything like she's done in this game, she's got to be real pleased. Turnover will give the ball to the Phantoms. The Bruins going full court man to man, and they have to. They've got to do something. That was a real, real bad third quarter for them. And now the Phantoms turn it over. So, so the pressure defense pays off. Here's something from the baseline camera as you see Mr. Ron Baton's work for us. Johnson is open for three, got it this time. So Veronica Johnson has seven points in the game, two of two free throws, a two and a three pointer. Bruins will bring it across. You see Brian Weaver coaching the whole game. He he, is, he doesn't sit down. Oh no, I, he hasn't sat down at His all. His coat came off about the two minute mark of the first quarter. Bruins again try the three pointer. This one doesn't go, but they get the offensive board. No good. Stick back is good. That was Renee Lancaster's bucket. So the lead now whittled down to 13. Ruins hanging in there. Christina Parrish. Oh, nice fake before she went up for the shot. Got uh, got Ashley Spriggs off her feet. She's been quiet, has Parrish, but she yeah. gets a key bucket there just as the Bruins are making a bit of a run. At the free throw line, kick it out. The Phantoms knock it out. And they say it actually then went off of Williams, they're going to say. Last player to touch it, a Bruin. Russell guarded by Williams. 43-28, as you see in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Oh, nice feed for the open player, but she was so wide open, she missed the shot. Yeah, sometimes that happens. You get two open. Johnson double teamed, finds a teammate in the corner. Back to Johnson, no good, but she got her own rebound, still no good. And back come the Phantoms. Williams with a good steal, but saved it right to a Phantom. And hurt her hand in yeah, the process. Yeah, I was going to say she's uh, grimacing and holding her hand. There was Christina a three by Parrish. Perry. She's been quiet until the fourth period here, and she's added six points to make her total eight on the night. Williams still favoring that hand. This is Spriggs, and Spriggs spanks it in. Spriggs has seven points on the night. Harris looked like she might have dragged her pivot yeah, foot. Yeah, she did. Nobody picked it up. Eagle eye saw it, but it doesn't count. 
No, you don't have a whistle or a striped shirt. And or you a, may have one at home. It's a good thing. Oh, there's a travel. Wins. Well, she was going to throw yeah, the she, ball in, and then all of a sudden she, the player turned her back, yeah. and she's, oh, what can I do? Well, she's shooting. No, don't. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh rats. It's not what I meant to do. She just got hung up in midair there. and, and <laughs> That's the old fish or cut bait, and she, <laughs> she fished when she should have cut yeah, bait. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 426 left in the fourth period. Phantoms have led throughout the game. They lead by 16 right now. And then they turn it over. Three-pointer, no good. Offensive rebound just kind of thrown up wildly. And then the Bruin stepped on the baseline. Looked like she might have gotten a little help. Yeah. Lancaster, a little, uh, little, little nudge, nudge there. Yeah. But not the way the officials saw it, so the Phantoms will inbound it. So Russell will bring it across the timeline. Shot is short. Follow is no good, but the foul will be called against Lipford. 341 left. We've got to be thinking about our players of the game. Right. <clears throat> so I'm going to tell Mr. Uh, Mike Hauser who those are so we can orchestrate that. And there's, here's where I'm coming from right here. At the free throw line. And the Bruins player of the game. So the Bruins hanging tough, down by 15. And stolen. Johnson nice spots. Pass. Yep. Nice Excellent pass. Excellent pass as she spotted her teammate, Shyla Gregory, open. They got to get some turnovers, and the coach is trying to get them to be a little more aggressive. Full court and uh, to let the uh, Phantoms bring the ball up, but you can't let that young lady shoot. She's liable to hit those threes. Yep. Turn around and she got the two. So she had just two points at halftime, but she has added eight more. And now Brian Weaver wants a timeout. So we're going to tell you who our players of the game there are. There you go. Get them. Once we decide which one to go show first. Oh, okay. <clears throat> we're going we to show. We're trying to get a coordination thing here. Once we see it, we'll tell you. There's the Bethel player of the game, Veronica Johnson. Good night on her part. Okay, Veronica Johnson with seven points unofficially. And an excellent evening ball handling as well and the player of the game for Whitney Hill I mean Whitney Hill is for Phoebus rather <laughs> for Phoebus Whitney Hill unfortunately we don't have a picture of her because she was uh, absent the day we they, were taking the class photos yeah they came over here to do it and now happened to be a day she was not in school and not at practice so but uh, congratulations both of those young ladies those <laughs> come from uh, trophy world Eight, and 18 points for Whitney Hill a lot of a superb sports. night and a good night by uh, Christina Paris. Very quiet. Well, as I said, she only had two points at halftime, but has added eight more here in the second half to keep that lead intact for the Phantoms. Ball batted around and chased down by Russell. She couldn't hold on to it, however. 2.20 remaining in the ballgame. 
15 points the difference. The Phantoms on top, but the Bruins battling till the end. And you see Brian Weaver, he has not sat down or stopped coaching ever since the initial tip ball. Might have taken a break for a minute or two at halftime, but that's about it. Well, I don't know that he took a break. <laughs> I mean, as in walking to the locker room. <laughs> oh, that's about it. Hill gets called for the foul. They say she bodied the Bruin. Got a good block on her, but got her with the body. Spriggs will check back in in a moment for the Bruins. So I was watching Brian Weaver, and he's going to the bench and pulling us out. That would be the hardest thing for me to know when to substitute whom. You know, you, you, as a coach, you, you've you done it, and you know, I guess you have situational things. Well, and you know which player is a better shooter under pressure, which one's a better ball handler, which one's a better rebounder. So you and you just you just get a feel for it. I know one game I coached that looked like, made me look like a, a, the best coach in the world. We was coaching, uh, playing against uh, – uh, was a Kickatan over at Bethel, and we were trailing by four, four by three points, and uh, my buddy Johnson came down, hit the shot, the net got hung up on the rim, so they called timeout. I sent Rodney Campbell in. I said, Rodney, you go in for Johnson because Rodney was a better defensive player. He stole the ball, made the basket, we won by one point. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, what a great coaching job, right? But you know, it just um, don't happen. And I'm sure there's times to see Dave Pearson in used to be over Bethel. There's times when you probably coached better than that and, and it didn't turn out that yeah, well. Yeah, but it just but I just knew he was quicker, but had no idea he would steal the ball on the inbound. So you remember the you remember all those details. Oh, you do. I mean, those things just stick with you. I can't remember what I had for lunch. <laughs> well, I was having trouble who won player of the game Tuesday. <laughs> this is Friday. Uh, you got a lot on your. There you see our excellent camera people, Mr. Braxton to your right. And who did you identify the, the gentleman on your left? Huh? Some, <laughs> that's Braxton, and I think that's Ricky Brown up there. The Ricky. That's not Braxton? No, one of them's Braxton, yeah. Well, that's not what Scotty said. Oh, uh, there you did. And I think that's Ricky Brown or, or John Moore. I'm not sure which is which. John's uh, on the floor camera. So that's. John Moore's on the floor, so that means uh, Ricky Brown is up there next to Breck. 49-36, the Bruins have cut the lead down to 13. Christina Parrish banks it in. My <laughs> gracious. She knows when to come alive. She's kind of she? like that uh, Super Bowl MVP they had to vote the, before the, uh, the fourth quarter was ha halfway through, and uh, some, some of the players came up with some outstanding plays. I like what uh, what uh, not Madden, but uh, Al Michaels. Al Michaels said, "Just give it to the whole defense, because yeah. really, they are the ones that, that made that game the way it was." Johnson's shot is a little short. Offensive board blocked. Williams follows, no good, and chased down in the corner by Hill, our Phoebus player of the game. She gets it in the corner for Russell. Now they work it around. Good baseline feed, shot kind of wild, but an offensive rebound keeps the ball in control of the Phantoms. And with a buck five left, they can just about wear the clock out and then a traveling call. 103 left in the ball game. Bruins will lose the game, but it will not be from a lack of effort. They've played, and they've played the same way against Hampton in our Tuesday game. Yeah. Just, uh, all out hustle and when you know when you're the coach and you're a fan you can't fault the team for losing if they hustle the whole game and they and they have it might be out talented but you can't get out hustled and as long as you're hustling then you're doing what you got to do in and out Hill with the rebound right wing pass and the jumper is a little short Brooke Williams with the rebound 37 seconds remaining. Again, we remind you, we'll have the boys' contest as well between these two schools. Phoebus has a busy week. They played Tuesday night. They played a, a makeup game Wednesday night. Played and then night. tonight, this is their third. And then they played tomorrow? No, this, they'll play four in five days. They'll end up, this is their third game. 
third game in, in uh, four nights. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's tough. But the Phantoms girls team, at least, held up well. 20.7 on the clock. And Veronica Johnson, our player of the game, will come out. Here's some of the action there you see Johnson in your picture. Almost stolen and then is stolen. Knocked away by the Phantoms. I believe it was knocked out of bounds by Phoebus. Uh, took her arm off, but then they're going to give the ball back to the Phantoms. And I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and neither can Brian Weaver. <laughs> Coach Weaver said, what? Actually said, white? That was a strange call. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. And that will be the buzzer to end the ball game as the Phantoms win the by the final score of 51 to 36 and they will improve to seven and five in the district and nine and six overall while the Bruins will fall to two and eleven and four and twelve overall our players of the game again Veronica Johnson from Bethel High School and our player of the game, Whitney Hill from Phoebus High School. Tonight's contest has been brought to you by Zooms with 14 convenient Peninsula locations to serve you. By Hampton Chevrolet at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard. And in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home. Give them a call at 827-4670. That's going to do it for us here at Phoebus High School. The final score, Phoebus 51 and Bethel 36. For Bob Hintz and Mike Hauser, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.